Have you been driving around in a petrol or diesel powered vehicle? That might be changing anytime soon. And a lot of questions, really, because this is a new terrain, and a lot of Nigerians are wondering just how will this work? How will I key into it? Just how soon? Well, this morning we're speaking with someone who knows better. Justice Terefaka is a technical advisor, gas business and policy implementation to the Honorable Minister of State for Petroleum Resources. He is the program manager in Nigerian Gas Flare Commercialization Program and also the program manager, Auto Gas Subcommittee of the National Gas Expansion Program. He joins us from our Abuja studio this morning. Well, thank you for joining us on Sunrise Daily. Perhaps I shall begin with maybe the big question on the minds of a lot of Nigerians. How soon can they convert that diesel-powered or petrol-powered vehicle to an autogas-powered vehicle? All right, thank you. Very good question. Um, first, let me start uh, by saying that, indeed, there is a sparse availability of uh, conversion centers. And of course, um, uh, um, gas refueling stations in the country. But what, we, what, we, what we've done now is that we're carrying out an upgrade of over um, um, 50,000 conversion centers, and more will come up um, within the period that we've, we've, we've phased out um, the uh, deepening of this um, auto gas initiative. And, and, and we've started with NNPC, like, like you rightly uh, showed on the screen yesterday. Um, government is trying to walk the talk by making sure that. NMPC, through the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, is um, uh, driving that process with the conversion of co-location, if you like, of these um, uh, uh, gas products at NNPC owned and operated stations across the country. And of course, there is additional 600 NNPC owned uh, lease and affiliate stations that will come up in the second phase. So um, the upgrade is going on. So if you, um, we have the, the list of um, uh, conversion centers, and of course the kits that will be deployed to convert these vehicles to run on a dual fuel. Now, apart from the government angle, the private sector have also keyed into the program, the likes of Moman, Dapman, Eatman, and other associations have keyed in, and investors are beginning to bring in um, conversion keys and of course trying to establish uh, conversion centers. Don't forget, the idea uh, behind the national gas policy is to bring in investors in, in the gas uh, subsector, and of course to create um, uh, employment opportunities. So we're taking it in phases, and. Uh, like you rightly mentioned, yes, it is new for um, this climb in Nigeria, but the use of auto gas and uh, natural gas vehicles, which is um, uh, LNG and CNG, has been in existence for over 75 years. So what we're doing as a nation is we're doing catch-up, and that we're not resting on our oars. Mm. Well, you still haven't given me a time frame, because as a vehicle owner, a lot of Nigerians definitely want to cut costs, and they want to have a mental you know, picture of, when they can do that. So are you saying that they can't do that for now until maybe next year? What's the time frame really? Okay, no, no, in terms of time frame, right now there are some centers that are converting vehicles. So if you take a vehicle to certain, uh, some of the stations we have, like the one we were commissioned yesterday, the, um, the partnership NMPC had with these uh, conversion um, uh, 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 technicians and uh, original equipment manufacturers are there. So you can convert your vehicle and begin to run on dual fuel. Like I did mention, we don't have conversion centers across the country 100% now. So right. it's coming out in phases, like I did mention again, 50 conversion centers are going to be upgraded and that will mm. be done between now and the end of this year. So to put it clearly, from January 2021, we will have conversion centers across the six geopolitical zones, but not 100% across the um the 36 states of the, of the Federation. Mm. So it's, it's coming out in phases, and that's one of the lacunas we observed as well as part of the design. How right. that, that notwithstanding, there are certain centers that have these conversion centers that you can go and convert your vehicle. And, 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 and just to put, put, put it into perspective, when we say conversion of your vehicle, it's not something that will take three weeks or seven days. It's something that will just take you around uh, 6.7 or 8 hours max because they need to do a diagnosis of your vehicle to see if it's fit for conversion. After that, they do a test and then do a roadworthiness and then they hand over your vehicle to you. So well, presently now, there are, um, of course, um, uh, um, um, uh, co manufacturers or, or conversion centers that are doing that conversion. Just to, put, to let you know again, uh, and like the Honorable Minister said four months ago, 
he, he has uh, converted all his official vehicles to run on autogas. And the same thing he has mandated his uh, lieutenants, the CEOs of the different agencies in the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, to do the same. And they are uh, complying in that directive. Some Actually, of us, as single advisor to the Home Minister, we've committed our petrol and diesel generator to run on autogas. Mm. So these conversion centers are there, but like I did mention, it's sparse. Right. Naturally, the next question will be, who's going to bear the cost? Is it the car owner, the vehicle owner, or the government, or is it some kind of private-public partnership such that the government will speak with the private, you know, uh, plants that you do the conversion? But basically, who's bearing the costs for conversion? Maybe I'll turn the question to you. Who owns the car? The owner of the car basically will decide to say, I want to run on autogas auto or CNG or LNG. And like we did, like we did mention, the mini Hermes had mentioned it as well, that conversion basically has different strands. You can partner with your bank, and then the bank will now agree with the conversion center to say, convert this our customer's vehicle for free. Not free in its entirety, but then you now go and then you convert your vehicle. So what, what happened is that the, the um, installer will now put some form of mechanism that each time you buy the gas, a certain amount will be deducted to pay off for the conversion kits. Now, um, some people want to say it's too expensive. I don't think it is because within a period of five to seven months, you've already paid off um, uh, the uh, conversion uh, cost, conversion kit costs, and that in itself has saved you um, uh, the use of gas in lieu of petrol to about 45, uh, 50%. So there's a huge cost saving in that regard. So to answer your question directly, there are different uh, mechanisms towards converting your vehicle and making the necessary payment. Mm. How much will it cost each person who is going to convert the vehicle? Can you take that again? That was a bit faint. How much will it cost any car owner or vehicle owner who is converting the vehicle from petrol or diesel to CNG? Okay, um, the, the cost varies. So in terms of cost implication, it depends on the cylinder of the vehicle. And of course, for a typical SUV six cylinder, it's a bit higher, but on the average, it's around 200 to 250,000 uh, Naira. And this is for um, uh, a four cylinder vehicle, but it becomes a little, a little bit higher for a six cylinder SUV vehicle. So in terms of a uh, conversion kits, the, the prices differs. Mm. Uh, let me let me take this this quote from uh, the the GMD of NMPC just yesterday uh, during that program, saying that to support this effort, NMPC is providing free conversion services in some selected NMPC retail filling stations to assist interested motorists switch from PMS to Autogas. So uh, he sounds like it will be free, and but you say that the motorists will bear the cost. So to what extent, really? did mention there are different approaches to making the payment or getting your vehicle converted. So when we say it is free, you go to a conversion center, there are certain fundamentals that you need to comply with in terms of documentation requirements. So you don't need to pay a dime at the, at the, at the spot of the conversion. So you go home and then you use your vehicle. But like I did mention, each time you buy the gas, certain amount will be deducted from that payment to offset um, uh, what you, um, um, you, you, the conversion of, of your vehicle. Saying that people can work, walk into or drive into a conversion center, get the conversion done, and pay over time. Is that what you're saying? Indeed. Okay. Now, what will it take? What's the process? What's the procedure of anyone who wants to get this done ASAP? What, what, is, what are they supposed to do? Do they need to sign a form? Do they need to go online, download a form? What's the process? Okay, so the, the process is this. There are, like I did mention, <coughs> car owners need to be careful because of um, uh, proliferation of uh, substandard products, which we don't anticipate to have in country as we speak. But the point is, we will have designated conversion centers on our website, the Ministry of Petroleum Resources website, and of course, the National Gas Expansion Program website to say, these are the accredited um, uh, conversion centers. So when you go to that conversion center, the conversion centers will have some form of agreement with banks, and of course, your bank, 
you know, that is coming in and then to see that, okay, you have a job and then you have a business that is thriving, you fill the necessary forms and documentations and then they let you be. But now the point is, you're not going to pay anything at that point in time. So they have your records, just like you, they have a typical um, 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 a staff of an, of, of an organization. So each time you go fill up your tank with gas, they begin to deduct from, your, uh, from the payment of the gas. You know, if it's free, it is free. If you have to pay over time, it is not free. So, well, it's good you're clearing that. So it is not free, pretty much. So maybe people might want to take the statement of a GMD in that context. But let's talk about the, the process also, because you've talked about substandard products. And if there's anything we know about gas, is the fact that, I mean, gas and fire, they go hand in hand when not handled well. So how much are you enforcing, or would you be enforcing such that people don't walk into unaccredited centers to get their cars converted, and we begin to have you know, fire incidents because the process was not followed. How much uh, of enforcement would you be putting in place? All right. Um, we, we understand um, the public concern with respect to safety and of, of gas as well and the usage of gas in the country. So what we're doing differently in the National Gas Expansion Program is that there is a subcommittee in the NGEP that is taking care of health, safety, and environmental concerns. And that is the Department of Petroleum Resources and the Standard Organization of Nigeria. So these two bodies chair the subcommittee on safety and use of gas with respect to auto gas, uh, CNG, and of course LNG, which is the National Gas Vehicles. Now, so what we're doing, for on, the, on the side of DPRO, they've come up with guidelines for uh, refueling stations to meet up before you can co-locate auto gas alongside the white products. For the Standard Organization of Nigeria, every product, every conversion kit that is coming into the country must meet up with the set standards. And, and, and that is what we're doing. So in that regard, we, we were trying to um, carry out a lot of awareness in the public space to make Nigerians know that when you convert your vehicle to run on autogas or NGV, you're not sitting on a time bomb. And the reason is this. The gas cylinder is 30 times reinforced with thick steel compared to the petrol and diesel tank that you already have in a vehicle. Additionally, there are safety um, valves and uh, devices attached to the cylinder. So I'll give you, for instance, um, if for some reasons your engine stops, if you're running on, on gas, automatically there's what we call a, a, an electronic solenoid valve that shuts in the supply from the circuit to the engine. If there is an accident, is that there's a high impact accident on your vehicle, there is a relief valve that's automatically shorts in and vents so that there is no fire, there's no ignition, and everybody is safe. So all of those safety measures have been in place. Now, over time, technology has evolved. And like I did mention earlier, we as a nation were doing a catch-up with this technology that has been in the for the past 75 years. So the auto gas initiative in the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, like the Minister rightly mentioned, is for us to look at a diversification of our nation's uh, fuel portfolio, which is cheaper, affordable, and of course, um, uh, reliable. I mean, you know the troubles we've had with petrol, you know, subsidy, importing petrol, and how that has affected our economy. You know, we, we, we do that in dollars. But now, looking at a report from PPPR, you see that Nigeria imported 62% of LPG, which was consumed in 2019. And you wonder, so how much of this is a, is a game changer? I mean, I keep using that term. If we still import a large amount of this gas, how will that help the situation we already find ourselves in? So we don't import gas, we, we produce gas in this country. And what we're doing, just like you rightly mentioned, the auto gas scheme, or if you like the national gas expansion, is more like um, to cushion the impact of the deregulation that, or that took place in uh, early this year in March 2020. So what we're doing now is to use our abundant natural resources that we have in country to begin to flood the market with gas molecules and to deepen the penetration of domestic utilization of the natural gas resources that we have in this country. 
So as we speak, we are in discussion with the IOC, the marginal field operators, including the Nigerian liquefied natural gas, to pump in enough gas molecules to flood the market and make gas cheaper for uh, this program to thrive and, of course, to end uh, that uh, sustainability that we desire. So, um, yes, indeed, um, the, P the PMS uh, uh, price has, has gone up, the, again, after the deregulation. But what we're providing is the alternate fuel for Nigerians to use, and which is why we're encouraging Nigerians and we're persuading them to say, see gas as the alternate the bridging fuel, which is, um, of course, uh, in terms of health impact, in terms of pollution, it, it serves even a better purpose to Nigerians. And, of course, aligning with Mr. President's commitment at COP21 with other world leaders to reduce greenhouse gas emission. So, in its entirety, the, the public, what we're trying to do is to see, for the public to see um, the, the socioeconomic benefits, the health benefits, and, of course, um, uh, the... A financial benefit that will come to them because again using gas gives uh, the user the opportunity that your vehicle doesn't need to go to the mechanic every now and then so if you go to the mechanic every month for using gas you go to the mechanic maybe three months or six months as a case on that be. issue still and staying on that issue of gas, importing let's gas let's say, part, pardon me we'll get into the, the cost effectiveness but do you say that we don't import lpg at all is that is that what you're saying No, no, you are talking about petrol, and I said, no, I said gas, we LPG. have it in country in abundance. I'm, I'm specifically yes. talking so about LPG. So we get LPG. LPG from across the different... Please go on. We get our LPG from Nigerian liquefied natural gas. We get it from NMPC stations. And then in country, we have other uh, private investors that flood our market with LPG and other gas resources that we use in country. How much of but it do we IOCs, import? But IOCs, um, again, uh, LNG, they, they, they export some of their um, uh, uh, LPGs, which is why we're encouraging them to say, look, try to cut short your exports of LPG and try to flood it into the domestic market for us to use. And LNG has graciously increased their um, uh, LPG um, uh, supply to the country from 350 to, uh, to add up additional 150 metric tons for us to use. Hey, Mr. Mr. Derefaka, I'm, I'm sorry. Project with Seplat, I'm and, sorry. I'm trying to reconcile because I'm looking at a report, like I said, that says that we import LPG. In fact, it listed the PPPRA listed a particular company as the highest importer of a commodity into the country. It talks about about forty three thousand eight hundred and eighty eight metric tons of LPG, which represents forty eight point seven eight percent of the total import. So, do we import LPG or not? Well, you're, if your record says we import, then we import. And you're quoting by PPPROA. All right. So you were, you were talking about the cost effectiveness. So, I mean, we know how much we buy petrol on a daily basis to use in our cars. So how much would we be saving? That's if people choose, because I, I believe that this is not compulsory. People can choose to or not. So how much will people be saving? Because I realize you were talking about that. So if you convert a vehicle today... You recoup your money back within uh, five to seven months. Now, in terms of cost saving, it's around 45 to 50 percent using gas in lieu of petrol. The additional saving, the additional benefit for using gas is this. For using petrol and diesel, you have the wear and tear of your piston rings and all of those. And you have deposits, carbon deposits, which again pollutes the environment. Now, if you use gas, all of those are not there. And then you have a longer living span of your engine and, of course, your vehicle. You don't go to your mechanic every month or every uh, two months. For gas, it gives you um, the additional benefits of um, uh, not um, uh, spilling up when you're filling up gas. Now, of course, we know that uh, you can pilfer or there could be theft of petroleum uh, product or diesel. You cannot steal gas from your vehicle. So we, we're seeing auto gas as a weapon against climate change, again, what, 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 um, alluding to Mr. President's commitment at COP21 to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So all of these are the benefits of using gas uh, for your vehicles. Perhaps there will be a so, need yeah, for you... The other part I wanted to mention was... Okay, j just a moment. Perhaps there will be a need for you to educate Nigerians, just as you said, increase the awareness of uh, people about LPG in Nigeria because... 
The records say that the PPPRA put out that notice that will still import a significant amount of gas, LPG in particular, in Nigeria. So perhaps there is a need to reconcile those figures so that the Ministry of Petroleum Resources is speaking in one voice. You are the technical advisor to the, to the Honorable Minister, so one would assume that it is something that would be in your plate. However, there's this question that I wanted to ask you the other time when you were talking about uh, the other stations and all, uh, which is, have you factored in the likelihood of people being taken advantage of when they go to these designated, few designated LPG conversion centers. Have you factored in the possibility of some people, some operators there, who would want to take advantage of the fact that people want to rush into this one to make sure that they, they, they are not uh, ripped off? Especially since you also talked about theft. Okay, good. Now, uh, to your first uh, comment, uh, um, you, you keep repeating it, you and your colleague keep repeating it. If the PPPRA has said we import LPG, it's on record. So that means that is what it is. Now, going back to the second question, we, don't, we wouldn't want people, we don't see a situation where people will be um, extorted with respect to um, going to convert their vehicle to run on dual fuel. Now, here is the thing. I mentioned that conversion kits are sparse. Conversion centers are being upgraded. 50,000, uh, 50, about 50 conversion centers are being upgraded to cushion the impact of the rush. Now, when he talked about people being uh, extort, extorted with respect to maybe getting high price or too expensive cost to convert their vehicle, we don't see that happening. And the reason is this. Now, you recall the Horror Minister, as part of the um, Economic Sustainability Plan Initiative, approached the Central Bank of Nigeria and we secured a 250 billion uh, Naira uh, facility for uh, the mainstream and the downstream with respect to the National Gas Expansion Program. What this a fund is about is to uh, give it to private investors to bring in um, enough conversion kits and to establish conversion centers and of course other midstream um, uh, facilities in country. So we, we, we're seeing a situation where in the sh within a short time there will be influx of conversion kits and centers across the country which will of course reduce the, uh, uh, the, the cost of conversion of the vehicles. So the extortion, we don't see that happening uh, uh, in, in, in that space. We can exhaust this conversation today, and I'll be honest with you, I'm looking forward to converting Obviously my vehicle. Obviously we cannot, so we I'm need looking more forward time. to doing a conversion of my vehicle to you know, auto gas so I can you know, save some money on petrol. But I'd like to thank you so much, Mr. Justice Derefaka, for shedding some light on this new initiative, and we wish you the very best. Thank you for having me.